If you've ever wished that you could draw directly on your screen while working in Maya, then the grease pencil is a tool you should definitely add to your workflow. Hi, I'm Skitty, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to start working with a grease pencil. The grease pencil is a neat little tool Maya implemented in 2014 to let animators draw on their screens. It's quite simple to use, so let's jump in and open the tool. We can open it by going to the View tab in whatever window you want to draw on, going down to Camera Tools and selecting Grease Pencil Tool. Or an even simpler way, click the pencil icon in the viewport's quick selection shelf. Our cursor turns into a brush, and now we have the Grease Pencil toolbar accessible to us. Our default mode in this tool is the pencil tool itself, so right away we can dive in and start drawing on our screen. If you start drawing and nothing shows up on your screen, make sure the Grease Pencil is visible in the Show tab. Once we start drawing, notice this block that appears on our timeline? That's the frame that represents our scribbles. The Grease Pencil creates new frames by default when we start drawing, but we also have the power to turn this feature off if you're a do-everything-manually kind of guy or gal. Just go back up to the View tab, hover over Camera Tools, and select the option box next to the Grease Pencil tool. Remember when I said this tool is very simple to use? We only have one option in here to think about aside from resetting the tool back to default, which is the Auto Create Frames checkbox. Personally, I'd leave this checked. It basically acts as an auto key function, which has saved more lives than can be put into numbers. Without Auto Create Frames selected, we would use the first button on our toolbar to create new frames. The next button is how we delete frames, but before we get too far into these features, let's talk about what the heck we'd even use this tool for anyway. There's three main reasons to crack open the grease pencil. The first and most common reason is to leave yourself animation notes. Tell yourself things you want to fix so you remember later. The second reason is planning out your shot. Whether that be character placement, posing, or even timing, the grease pencil can help you visualize these things. When it comes to planning timing, we can't be expected to nail it on the first attempt. So if I draw out a rough ball bounce example but find it's too fast when I hit play, I can shift select the key or multiple keys and leftmost drag them around the time slider just like regular animation keys. Much better. The third reason is drawing arcs. If you know before you even start animating where in your camera view you want an object to follow an arc, you can draw it on your screen with the grease pencil to use as a reference. I'm sure there's plenty of other reasons to use the grease pencil, so if you've used it for a reason other than the three that I've listed, let me know in the comments below. Did I mention that the grease pencil tool can also be used with a tablet? No? Oh, well, it can be used with a tablet, so it'll feel even more like a drawing program. Another way it feels like a drawing program is the fact that it acts like a literal layer. If you try rotating the camera, notice the drawing layer stays put like it's a layer on top of the camera. This is why I recommend using the grease pencil tool in the viewport that you plan on using for your render camera. This is the camera that will stay the most static and will reflect the end result. So let's get back to the functions available to us on the toolbar. We talked about add and remove frame, but we can also remove all of our frames at once by right clicking anywhere on the timeline hovering over Grease Pencil, and then Delete Frames. We can delete all or delete all for individual cameras. Next is our pencil tool we've been drawing with. Beside the pencil, we have the marker tool which gives us a much thicker stroke. Beside marker, we have our final pencil type, Soft Pencil. This one is a thin stroke with a feathered edge. Any of these brushes can be scaled up or down by holding the B key and leftmost dragging. To revert your brush size back to default, just go back to the Grease Pencil option box in the Camera Tools tab and hit Reset Tool. Our next option is a Color Picker tool. You can change your brush to any color you want. If you're tracking multiple objects, it's handy to use multiple colors to keep track easier. You can even reselect colors with the Eyedropper tool. Beside our Color Picker is the Eraser tool, which thankfully lets us erase freely rather than erasing an entire stroke. If you accidentally erase too much, you can always Control Z to try again. Our next two buttons are where things get fun. You may have noticed with the ball bounce example that when a drawing was active, the drawing before and after that frame was also visible at about 50% opacity. This is called ghosting, or as some people call it, onion skin. The terminology changes depending on which program you're using. These buttons here are called show pre-frame ghosts and show post-frame ghosts. So by unchecking these, our ghosts will disappear. 
We aren't limited to one ghost pre and post frame either. If we right click on these buttons, we can select to have up to four ghosts per side or type a larger number by selecting other. Our next features are import and export grease frames. We can export our grease drawings as their own file and import them back in. Lastly, we have the help button, which brings us to the Autodesk website to teach us all about the grease pencil, which hopefully you won't need to worry about at this point since we've now gone over everything you need to know to get started with the grease pencil. Leave a comment below if there's something you didn't understand, like and subscribe if you learned something, links to socials are in the description, and remember to always use a reference.